What's up, fam? Uncle Pawpaw here. Hey, I got a treat for you today. We doing lollipop chicken. That's right. Up here next on Uncle Pawpaw's Kitchen. Alright, welcome back fam. Alright, like I said, lollipop chicken. If you've been in the barbecue world, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, well, I'm glad I can bring it to you. Alright, so lollipop chicken. It's a chicken drumstick cleaned up to look like a lollipop. That's exactly what it is. Alright, so we're going to walk through all the steps, everything that we got here to make this happen. So, of course, we're starting with drumsticks. Okay. You're going to need a good, strong, sharp, sturdy knife and some, some uh, kitchen shears. All right, I have some foil, which we're going to wrap the sticks of the drumsticks to make sure they don't burn while we got them on the pit. Uh, we're going to cook it around 275 for about two, two to two and a half, maybe three hours, just so the temperature gets up to about 165. All right, then what we'll do um, after that, we'll dip it in some barbecue sauce put it back on the pit, let it set. All right, now the rub that we'll be using today is our chicken rub. That's right. All right, so which will be available on our website pretty soon, you know, shameless plug. Um, but, you know, our rub, equal parts salt, pepper, paprika, which gives that red color. Um, we got the garlic powder, onion powder, give that savory note. But what makes um, chicken rub a little bit different is we also add in some herbs, rosemary, sage, thyme, dill, ground celery flakes, um, and then of course, uh, lemon zest. So those things there, put in there, you know, kind of gives it a different flavor, which is still pretty damn good. All right, and then of course, the barbecue sauce that we're gonna be using is some barbecue sauce. All right, now, what you see here in front of me here, you're saying, okay, is he, I guess he's doing a brine. But what we're gonna use this today is, if you've been watching Uncle Paw Paw, you know that we really don't throw much away. We try to reuse everything as possible to be economically, or, you know, let's be, be frugal about it and make everything in-house, because we are homemade, all right? And if you've been watching, you know the small ones for the food scraps that we're gonna use, the big ones uh, for scraps that we're gonna throw away. All right, so without further ado, Let's get this thing started. All right, so first thing to do, wrap our chicken. Whoop. Throw our chicken on the cutting board. But the first thing we do, we're gonna kind of get it straight to where it's, you know, perpendicular to your board. And then we're just gonna put our blade right here to where it's straight. So we know that when we chicken, as much as possible, will stand up. So we put it in here, get our cut. Get in there, cut it straight down. All right, some bone, gristle, and meat. Put in our reused scrap, kind of stand it up. It may fall over, but once we cut the top and push everything down, it'll balance the weight. All right, now, when we cut the top, you know, it has that knuckle. So if you can't see, I usually got it where that little roundabout on the back side where it comes down. I usually do it there. Or if you can't see that, where it kind of curves on the other side where it stops. Kind of right there. So take my knife, get in there, get in there, make a groove, fold it. And then cut it. There you go. Knuckle down. Then go about an inch, you can use your thumb as a guide, inch down, make a groove, turn, we're turning the drumstick as we're cutting the tendons, the meat, the skin. All right. There we go. And we're just gonna pull that right off. All right. It's tendons, like I said, some meat, skin, some stuff that 
Some people don't eat. Uh, I grew up in you know Mississippi in the summers with my my great grandmother, my big mama, uh, and we had you know fried chicken, or chicken. We had chicken at least four times out of four times a week. Uh, and I grew up eating eating the gristle and things like that, so it doesn't bother me. But you know, for presentation wise, uh, things like this, it makes it a whole lot prettier. All right, so now once you get that off, it's clean. You know, we're gonna hold a stick, wrap our finger around where the drum starts, and just push that. Push and pull, pull, push. Just kind of push it down as far as it goes. Don't lose control. <laughs> All right, there you go. Any meat hanging, just kind of just tuck it down in there. All right, and boom, stands up. And that exactly how, like I said before, exactly how we're gonna cook it. All right, go to the next one. Line it up straight, get my knife. Make it straight. That's gonna be saved. But that one stands up right below. All right, get a knife right there behind that, right behind that knuckle. down, turn, 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 like I said, using a sharp knife, most times you won't need the, sh the kitchen shears, kitchen scissors, and there are times, you know, as soon as you say it, of course it happens, there might be some tendons left over, just hang it. Go ahead and throw that in there and we'll put that in the trash for now. Because once we did, you know, once we use our, put all our items in there to make our brine, uh, we're going to filter, but some of these tendons could slip through the filter. So just throw them away. All right. I'm going to hold it, push. Boom. Pull the skin down, you know, pull the shirt back down, pull up that belly. As I suck mine in, <laughs> All right. tuck that meat down. Now there is a that little thin bone sitting there, and you can dig in there and try to get it out, or you can go to the inside right here and pop it. Try to pop it, but I tend to leave it because I don't want to mess with the integrity of the chicken. Uh, but if you get good, go on there on the other side and take this. Cut that off. All right. Beautiful. All right, my knife up. Oh, cool. Make my groove. Chop. Inch down. Cut. Turn. 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 Now, you know, when you do this, of course, you know, I always want. All, all, all our viewers, fans, hey, you know, do this at home. Try it at home. Send me a picture. Tell me how you did it. Because the look on your guest's face when they walk by, those who especially have never seen anything like this or ever heard of, ever heard of lollipop chicken, going to be amazed. Push that down. Put my shirt down. Down. Boom. 
Alright, now like I said, we're going to wrap them. Hands don't burn. Because you want that pretty presentation. When you grab it, you don't want it to be all burnt. You know, it just doesn't, doesn't really look appealing. So, I'll do that. Alright. Then, once you do that, we'll season it. A little dust. And then once we finish off, knock out the rest of them, we'll get them all dusted like that. I'll chop up my vegetables, put them in there, get that ready for broth later on. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and dust these off, and I'll meet you at the pit. All right, fam, we outside. As you can see, I got my golf outfit on. Um, but, you know, put my golf hat on. Um, hopefully I'll get it, be out there tomorrow or something. Chasing some balls down range. Anyway, we got a charcoal on. We got some a couple fire starters in there. I like to take a little fire starter and kind of break it up and spread it around so it kind of helps, you know, get all the charcoal lit a little faster. Anyway, once that's gone, we'll let that go. Let the charcoal go about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Then we'll throw on some post oak, put that on there. I've already sprayed down my, my grill racks, sprayed it down with a little um, olive oil spray. You can use canola, but it's an olive oil and uh, grapeseed blend. It's kind of what I do. Uh, just grapeseed because of the higher temp, olive oil for the flavor. But I already sprayed it down, greased it down. Once the fire kind of dies down a little bit on the charcoal, like I said, about 10, 15 minutes, put some post oak in there. All right, until then, uh, well, before until then, also inside, I already went ahead and, and put on the uh, vegetables and the chicken, kind of put in some olive oil, salt, and pepper, and got a little broth going. You know, like I said, constantly use our use our scraps and don't throw anything away. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, light it up. Oh, we got a helicopter going above, you know, in our shot, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and while that's doing, drink on some old southern sweet tea. Alright fam, we back out here. It's been about 45 minutes. Um, pit running good. Put a fresh piece of wood on there. It's running at 275. Go ahead and put our chicken on. I'm gonna use the middle grate. I'm gonna place these standing up. Right, so they are going here. We'll let them go for about an hour. We'll come back and check on them. Around that hour and a half, we'll, I'll bring out the, the probe. We'll probe it, leave it out, set the temperature to 25. It'll go off, let me know. We'll use the, the, fat, one in, the, the fat one in the middle, the one I got my name on it, the one I'm going to eat. Uh, and probably that one too. So we'll uh, do that, let the rest of the temperature go inside. Get our barbecue sauce, sauce, barbecue sauce warming up. That will be ready to dip when it's warm, dip so it won't be splotchy, so it'll kind of roll off. Put it back on there, let it set. See you in an hour. All right, fam, it's been about an hour. Pit's running around 295. So. Look at that pretty color. All right, so now what I'm gonna do now, we'll go ahead and probe it. Turn that button. Put the temperature down to 165. And I'm gonna go ahead and probe, make sure I don't hit the bone. Yep, 
close it back up. All right, got our sauce. Got our sauce already warmed inside. We'll bring it out. As soon as the temperature hit 165, it's pretty much done. We'll bring, put the sauce out here. We'll dip it in, roll it around, get that can in, kind of like a candy cane. Roll it around, or not a candy cane, cotton can, excuse me. Roll it around, put it back on there. Let it go for about 15 minutes. That's that sauce set. Be good to go. Um, you know, typical ketchup, you know, vinegar. It does have molasses in it. Um, and then it's got some other herbs and things like that. Heavy on the celery side. Um, just a different take on how we do our barbecue sauce. Use whatever kind of barbecue sauce you like. Uh, but that's typically how what, what I use is. Um, and that's it. We'll be back when it's time to dip. All right, fam. It's been about two hours. About two oh five. Alarm went off when they removed the probe. Nice. Alright, so now what we do, I'm gonna go ahead, dip, roll, put back on. They are hot. Nylon gloves on to beat these. Uh, but I do have a, uh, I do have a cook's hands. All right, so we're gonna let that go. A good 15. Minutes, let that stuff set on there. It'll be speed time. All right, fam, we're back. Checking off the pit, remove the foil tops. Getting ready time to dig in. Before we dig in, do want to point out here's the chicken broth that I made. Um, I say took the bits and pieces of chicken with the carrots, celery, onions, garlic, salt, and pepper. Uh, hit it with olive oil, then added the water. Uh, boil, let it reduce down, filter out, and this is what you get on the top. This is just the fat. All you can do is just let it cool, scoop that fat off. Great uh, chicken broth right there. And it smells incredible. It actually smells a little bit better than what you buy in the store uh, because it's just that fresh. And then, of course, I got my southern iced tea. All right, so that's uh, dig in. And where's that one that I was looking for? Wow, all that time. There it is. Mmm. Bite through skin. Cooked all the way, all the way through. Still tender. Still juicy. Oh man. It's a good chicken, man. You know, at least I got one hand clean with the, the hand stick. Mmm. That's it right there. So, man, well, just took off, cut off the knuckles just on the on the drum part. We just flatten it out. So I'm gonna stand up. Again, we didn't do no bride. Like you're more than welcome to put on the pit 275 first hour. Put the probe in it for the second hour. Once it hit up the temperature of 165, dipped it in some barbecue sauce. Let it set for another 15 minutes on the pit. Take it off and it's ready to eat. So all again, I want you to try it yourself. Shoot me a picture. Shoot me an email. Let me know how it turned out. I'm Uncle Paw Paw. Thank you for watching Uncle Paw Paw's Kitchen. All right, man.